Hey guys, welcome back. Today I've got kind of a fun video for you. We're gonna talk about some curriculum. The Good and the Beautiful has some new versions of their curriculum they have come out with, and I'm really excited to flip through them. I'm gonna share with you guys the new format for their language arts curriculum. This is the kindergarten level. I don't believe that every single level has been reformatted yet and sort of you know reworked into this new style, uh, but I know level K is, and I think one other level, it might be level one. They might just be going in order. So we're gonna flip through, we're gonna talk about this just as a, a helpful informative video for those of you who are looking into the good and the beautiful. Now I've said this many, many times, first of all, this isn't sponsored in any way. They didn't even send me these things. I paid for these things myself um, because I just really enjoy sharing with you guys different curriculum, what's out, uh, my thoughts on curriculums we've used before and how they've changed. Because frankly, I know when I'm searching for curriculum, I find content like this to be very helpful. So that is what we are doing today. Be sure to subscribe if you're not already. I do wanna take a quick second to remind you guys, number one, that my homeschooling course, The Art of Home Education, is open for enrollment again. So I launched this course last year. Hundreds of homeschool moms, um, potential prospective homeschool moms, as well as current homeschool moms, veteran homeschool moms have taken this course. It's a six week comprehensive course, kind of A to Z, all the nuts and bolts of homeschooling. So enrollment is open for that course again. I will put all the information down below in the description box. All right, that's it for the updates. Let's get into the flip through and let's talk about some curriculum. So this is the Language Arts Level K course book. And as you can see, this covers phonics, writing, reading, grammar and punctuation, spelling, literature, geography, and art. It's really one of the things that people love most about The Good and the Beautiful is how comprehensive their curriculums are, how many different subjects they cover in the language arts curriculum. I mean, it's really impressive how many different things that uh, they touch on in this curriculum. So at the beginning of, I believe, every level, this is pretty similar to what it used to be. Uh, they want to make sure that you have this assessment to evaluate your child and make sure that they can pass this assessment before you put them into this level. Um, the Good and the Beautiful also has assessments on their website where you can see what level your child places into because their levels do not directly correspond to grades. You want to do the placement test to be sure that you put your child into the right course. And then it's gonna go through and show you all of the items that are needed. So the course set items, obviously you're gonna need this course book. You're gonna need the Reading Booster A books and cards that are in this set. So these come in the course set. And then it lets you know what free apps are available. I love that The Good and the Beautiful has released a Letter Tiles app. We use a Letter Tiles app with the All About Reading and I love it. So I'm very excited to see that The Good and the Beautiful has a Letter Tiles app. We have not downloaded that yet. I'll let y'all know in the future what I think. And then of course, just more information if you need to access free apps, the website and all of that. Items to always have on hand when you're doing this. So if you want to put things into like a pencil box, if you're doing school on the go, you know what you need to bring with you. Um, and then extra items. So this is gonna be stuff that a lesson tells your child to, I don't know, cut something out or highlight something or Apparently at some point you're gonna need a car key. So things like that broken up by unit one, unit two and unit three, the additional items that you will need. And then if you move on, it says suggested coordinated reading for my first readers. So this is just gonna be additional reading books that you can purchase. Um, they will be of course, obviously available at the Good and the Beautiful. And then it's more information about the Letter Tiles app, which looks absolutely adorable. Then you move on to the course overview. And basically it's just explaining that this is a language arts and literature course. Preschool to level three courses focus heavily on phonics and reading and require one-on-one -on -one time with a parent and teacher each day. This is important to know this is obviously, especially at younger levels, I'm not sure there really is a parent-free thing other than maybe doing some kind of app or something, but pretty much any language arts um, reading curriculum you're doing with young ones is gonna require parent involvement. And then of course, level four and above are designed to be mainly self-directed. So hopefully you can get there. Self-directed is exciting. <laughs> then what the course covers, again, we read that at the front, prep, so if you bought the physical course set, you'll need the books and the boosters. And then it lets you know basically how long you should be doing this. You should work on this book for four to five days a week. Again, depending on how you have your school year set up, if you guys are year round homeschooling, um, if you're following the traditional school format, uh, that will all depend on you know how often you do this course. But now traditional public school year is 36 weeks. This course, because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't account for holidays and breaks and such. It says if you complete four lessons in this course per week, you will finish the course in 30 weeks, which is great. You can finish your school year early or you can do less 
each week or you can take longer with the lessons. You can kind of make it work for you. So it just basically tells you every day, you simply follow the instructions in the course book, um, the principles behind the course. It's easy to teach and no prep time, meaning it's kind of supposed to be open and go. Uh, connects multiple subjects, emphasizes the good and the beautiful, which is sort of the theme of everything that they do, and then creates excellent writers and editors. That's a big focus uh, in their courses is on writing and, um, and, and making your child an excellent writer. Again, explain the level K answer key is available as a free download. Uh, where you can find that unit reviews and assessments talks about the poetry memorization kind of why they do that how spelling works teacher read alouds this is all stuff that you should absolutely read it doesn't matter what the curriculum is i highly advise taking time out to sit down and read everything at the beginning of a course so that you understand how the course was designed intended to be used because again i feel like rules are best broken by those who know them so you need to know how it was intended to be used how it's uh, set up and then you can work around that and make it work for your family and be super flexible but it's best to do that with the knowledge of how it's supposed to be used all right so then here we're just moving on to the table of contents and it's just going to go over and explain to you and just a few words or less it's going to break it down by unit one two and three and basically what each lesson is about uh, how letters make words reading short sentences uh, group one site words writing short sentences word families that sort of thing so it breaks that down by each lesson so you can get an idea of what to expect and what you'll be doing when throughout the school year. And again, just at a glance, prerequisites and then what your child will hopefully learn in completing this course. So then it moves on to the scope and sequence of the reading booster cards. So reading booster A, which is what comes with the course, that correlates with level K. Then reading booster B goes with level one, C, level two, et cetera, et cetera. Again, sometimes kids are ready to go beyond uh, what they're doing here. So it's just kind of letting you know what the overall scope and sequence is to get your child uh, reading. Then the next page is explaining how the reading booster A target symbols work. So each lesson will direct you to work on reading booster cards or books. Your child will go through those at their own pace. However, uh, the child will need to have mastered some booster cards before completing certain lessons. So then it's letting you know kind of how that system works. Then we have the scope and sequence for spelling concepts practiced at level K, level one, uh, and level two pacing of the course. There's a lot of information in the beginning of this to prepare you for what to expect in this course and then subsequent courses so that you feel like you have a good grasp on like, when is my kid gonna learn all these things? At what point, at what level? Um, phonics principles. And then we get to a page that says, stop, complete these steps before beginning the course. Um, and again, it's things to verify that your child can do, then um, instructions for you as a parent before beginning lesson one, and then the app stuff. So it's just make sure you do this before you start lesson one. And now we are moving into the unit one overview. Um, it's gonna explain to you the spelling words to memorize, the extra items that are gonna be needed in unit one, the phonics principles taught, writing spelling principles taught, and the reading booster cards that are covered in the unit. And now we are finally at lesson one. If you're into checking boxes, there's a a little box at the top that says completed with a box for you to check if that's how you like to check off whether or not something's done um, if you don't use a separate planner some people just you know I, I love to check a box okay it feels real good doesn't it but I don't usually do that within the curriculum but you might so there you go then let's see we have a helpful hint at the beginning remember to start lesson one only after quote, master before starting the course, booster cards are mastered. It's gonna remind you again, that's how important it is down here, and then work on the reading booster cards, then read to your child. I love that they use different uh, colors for the writing so that you know the parts that you are supposed to like actually say. You obviously don't have to say them verbatim, but it's helpful. Um, and then the parts that are just for you to read about what's coming up, what are we doing, that sort of thing. So lesson one is introducing the alphabet. You know, there's 26 letters in the alphabet. Some of them are special when they're called vowels, that sort of thing. And then uh, there's a little bit of writing on the whiteboard that you'll be doing. There's some little activities in here. There's a little bit of interaction here with your student following along on the page with their finger. And then you have a page of independent practice. Uh, for different concepts. Here's what I really like about the changes that they, we've, they've made, and now we're on to lesson two. These lessons are, in my opinion, significantly shorter, more compact, easier to understand and grasp and get in, get out, and move on. And I have found, at least for my children, maybe your child is different, and if they are, feel free to challenge them. If they wanna keep going, let them keep going. But for my kids, I find that like short, 
to the point lessons are the best. And then we like obviously like a spiral method. So we're gonna keep going back over that thing a number of times as we move through the course, instead of like drilling down really hard into like a mastery method where we're just going after one thing super, super hard and, and intense for a bit and then moving on to something else. That is a bit harder for my kids anyways to learn that way. So I really like these kind of spiral methods, but utilizing really short lessons, um, very to the point, especially for the younger kids. So I like to see that these lessons have gotten shorter, more concise, and a little bit more to the point. So I'll just flip through and show you guys some of the pages so that you can see um, some of, of course, the beautiful artwork that's in here. That is the thing that, uh, you know, the good and the beautiful is, is sort of known for, if you will, is truly just how beautiful the artwork and the paintings and the books and everything, they're just, the aesthetics, if you will, is really, truly lovely. And you can see here for this one, it says on the Good and the Beautiful homeschooling app, go to Language Arts, Level K, Audio, Lesson 5, Audio no Narration. Play the audio narration while the child looks at the painting on this page. Super helpful if you're trying to juggle this child and other children to be able to play pre-recorded audios um, for them so that you're not having to narrate every single thing. The other thing I really like is that any activities that they're going to have your child do are simple. You're not gonna have to go hunting around the house for a bunch of things. So for example, here in lesson 11, um, there's some things for you to cut out but it would literally take you less than a minute to cut those things out, grab a glue stick, and let your child do the activity. So that, again, is the kind of thing that I really like is give my kid an activity, okay? They love activities, they really do. But if it requires a whole bunch of work from me ahead of time or set up, or in the moment panicking, being like, oh shoot, I gotta figure out how to get all this set up, then oftentimes we end up skipping them. So I like that these activities are simple um, and very quick and easy to, to get done for you as a parent, but still something engaging for your child and using other uh, sensory elements to help them learn the concepts. The other thing they do in here, which I really like, and I haven't seen before in a reading curriculum that we've used, maybe others do this, but for example, you're reading to your child this section of Bobby and the Big Road. Um, so you're reading this part of chapter one to them, which obviously they're not capable of reading this stuff yet. And so you're gonna read that, but then you go back and have them read the words that are in red of he and to, which are words that they're practicing obviously this week in lesson 53, but they're seeing it in the broader context of the entire chapter. And I just think a lot of times that's really like grounding for kids to make those connections between these aren't just singular words on a whiteboard that I'm writing or a flashcard that I'm reading or something I'm writing very quickly. They're seeing it within the context of a book, for a lack of a better term, contextualization of those words is really helpful helpful. So then at the end of a unit, so here we are at the end of unit two, you have a review for that unit to make sure that your child learned everything that they needed to learn um, in that unit and that they are ready to move on to the next. So you will do the very short and quick unit assessment and you've got a place down here to score it. And then you'll move on to the next unit. So this is unit three and you have an overview here, which again is just going to cover for you everything that your child is going to be learning, things that you'll need. Again, not not a lot um, and not a bunch of obscure, weird things, uh, simple things like spoons and highlighter and an unsharpened pencil, etc. Things that you will very likely have hanging around your house. At the end for lesson 115, we have here, I can read a hundred words. Here's what I will say. I do feel like this curriculum from where their student is starting to where they are supposed to end up by the end of it is a lot. Uh, it's a lot, I would say, for a year, depending on where your child is at developmentally, if reading is coming very naturally and quick and easy to them, or if they're struggling a little bit. So I would, again, encourage you just like any other curriculum to really take your time. Don't feel pressure that you have to complete the entire uh, course in one year. If your student needs more than one year for the course, that's totally okay. Take your time. Again, the course is, can technically being done four times a week, be done in 30 weeks. So draw that out. If a, a lesson is a little bit harder or they're having a hard 
harder time with that concept, just stay there until they get it and then move on. Um, because I do feel like, again, where you start at the beginning of this course to where your student ends up with ability and knowledge is, it's a big, it's a big jump. And of course you can see that in looking at the table of contents. So lesson one, vowels, um, how to make words, reading two letter words, spelling two letter words, one letter words, that's where we're starting, okay? So, you know, lesson five is covering one letter words like I and A, okay? And then by the time you get to the end of the course, by the time you get to the end of unit three, your child is talking about and doing ing words, being verbs, plural nouns, categories. Um, and here in lesson 111, the group four sight words are one, some, many, what, your, and put. That's obviously a, a big jump from the beginning. So just pointing that out. And then let's take a look at the reading booster A cards. It lets you know within the course when and where these will be needed and used. So no guessing there. Um, how to use the cards. Remember, you've got some that your student needs to master before they start the course. That's here on these purple pages are the master before starting the course section. So short vowels, consonants, the alphabet, blending to letters, etc. And then we move on to card one, blending to read, CBC words, hat, ham, had, rat, hid, that sort of thing. And you've got your groups of sight words here, which is fun. So a lot of these look a lot like the all about reading fluency sheets and practice sheets that are at the end. Obviously this is a smaller, more condensed version. They're very colorful, which is fun. I know sometimes my kids get super overwhelmed when you pull out those all about reading fluency sheets and it's like, just covered in words if they're feeling intimidated. That can look very intimidating. This doesn't, so I like that. This does feel a little bit more approachable than some of the others at the end of All About Reading, but again, I'm not knocking that. We love that curriculum. There's also a little section at the bottom that says ways to practice, and it just gives you some different ideas for ways to practice these words with your student or to have them practice the words. Additional you know, things, again, not something you have to do, but if your kid is struggling or uh, it's taking them a little bit longer, you may definitely want to add in the additional practice. So, so those are the reading booster cards. And then we have the reading booster A books. So these are the books that are gonna be read in conjunction with the different lessons. And just to give you an example, these look a lot like the Bob books. I'm sure y'all would probably agree that these are a little bit more aesthetically pleasing um, than the Bob books. Again, they work, Bob books work great, but I do love that uh, these, especially these early readers are getting a little bit more exciting to look at. I just really love the uh, beauty of these books, even for something like a very small, simple little early reader is still really an adorable little book that um, at least I think my kids would be excited to pick up and see, oh, what's happening here, you know? It's just, they're cute, they're fun to look at. So this one is I dig, I sit, I mix it, I zip it, I am on top, I am in it. The end. So yeah, you have book one, book two, Pam, we go, the jet, big red, fun in the sun. There you go, you've got your 20 Booster A books that go along with it as well. Overall, I really think that this is an improvement. It is a more simplified uh, version, in my opinion, of what their language arts has been in the past. Much more doable for kids. To me, my biggest struggle was always that between their language arts and their original math curriculum, these things would take a very long time. And for younger kids, um, for children with shorter attention spans, if you've got a, a kid with ADD or ADHD, like these can, it could be a challenge to sit for as long as what their previous lessons required. So I really like that they have simplified things because it allows students who want to do more to do more. You can absolutely expand, um, do additional activities, keep going, do more lessons. But for kids who maybe are more on like a typical pace or a little slower than typical pace, it still allows them to feel like they're getting through their curriculum. They're not just having to like eat this elephant one bite at a time. They feel like they're actually getting through it at more normal pace without feeling behind just because they can't do 
these big, beefy, meaty lessons at one time. All right, you guys, that is it for this little flip through and overview of the Good and the Beautiful's new language arts setup. I'm encouraged, I'm pleased, I'm anxious to see how these actually play out and using them, but I do think all these changes, on my end anyways, appear to be really good, positive changes, simplifying things, making it easier for you as the teacher, but also just more functional for our kids, right? I mean, that's kind of the combination that we want is something that works really well for us, but also really well for our kids. And I feel like they have uh, nailed that. That's it for today's video, y'all. I hope that you enjoyed. Let me know if there's any other curriculum flip throughs or anything that you would like to see. And that's it for me. I will see y'all again very soon. Bye.